Well, Dave, what do you think about that new piece of, I mean, the museum itself is a work of art. That's the word, and I'll tell you what, it's a must-see, go visit. And the best part about it, it's free. There's no reason not to go see the Cleveland Museum of Art. Got that right. Now, we're going to on our exclusive adventure, and Aaron Ludlum's taking us down into the Wolves' Den to check out this You're new... You're going to like her? Yeah, check out this new Akron band that's right on the edge. I mean, these guys have opened for this year, no doubt, Coldplay, and they are getting a lot of regional and national attention. As Ed Sullivan said, you know, we've got a really big show yeah. with the Wolves, a really big show. It's, they've got their own sound. I think you're going to dig it. Check this out. Hi, I'm Erin Ludlam with Arts Quest, and we are here tonight at the Wolves' Den. You are not going to want to miss this. Have you ever wanted to be able to say, yeah, I remember when they were just a local band. Yeah, I remember them when I was there. Yeah, well, this... This is now, this is then, this is here. We are here tonight talking to local Barberton-based band, The Wolves, whose rise to national stardom is happening at almost a breakneck speed. We're going to find out who they are, who they want to be, and exactly what they're doing that's garnering them so much attention. Baby from the rich and the famous, the cold heart of killers, that I let you smile on the edge of the night. It rolls off the tongue both ways. We've heard wolves, we've heard wolves. Mm -hmm. um, whichever way anyone Never says works. it. It doesn't matter at all to you guys. I don't care. <laughs> Some people are more, you know, prone to saying it the right way, but it's, it's fun. Originality is crucial to our band, mm -hmm. and so we ended up changing the spelling, um, which really kind of worked out. It kind of flowed off the tongue. And yeah, if you look up wolves on the internet, eight billion things up. Exactly. Come up wolves, W-O-O-V-S, we're the only thing that comes <laughs> up. So. Uh, Brian DeLotter, I play keyboard. Adam Lingo, I write music, play the guitar, and a vocal master. My name is Brant Novak, I play uh, bass, uh, sax, and guitar. My name is Kevin Hamrick, I play lead guitar, uh, rhythm guitar, I do songwriting, and play djembe. Dave DeBello, I play the drums. Uh, Rick Markowski, bass guitar, acoustic guitar, percussion, and backup vocals. So tell me guys, how exactly did this happen? Uh, me and this man uh, had always had a passion for music, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, we originally lived together, and he would always be into it, and I would think, you know, why don't I go in there and try that, you know? He said, come here and sing this song, man. I said, okay, I'll go in there and sing that song, whatever. And uh, it ended up sounding okay. Adam's bringing like the R&B <laughs> flavor Certainly. to it. The power pop. You, you, yeah, you've yeah. got Brian with like the, the beatbox thing. Yeah, he's the beatmaster general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is, so what are, what are you guys bringing? Um, I think from my perspective, um, in my college days, I was really into like roots, 60s reggae. The biggest part for me is jam oriented music. Jam I, uh, Definitely like to go off on a lot of tangents. A 10 minute song is no problem for me. I like that kind of stuff. Um, and I had a chance to live all over the country, so I've seen in the dead all over the country. I've seen fish all over. You know, that's kind of where I come from. That and like just roots rock mostly. You know, I think also Brant and I bring in the live element to the band. Oh yeah, we, like, we like to go off on a lot of tangents. That as they would, they happen. would be more studio oriented. We bring. I'm more concerned about, and I know he is as well, is a live performance and yeah. and creating sort of a myth through live performances, you know, of, of how you can, you know, really make someone's night or mm -hmm. really encompass, like, just emotion. Give you know? them something they weren't expecting. Yes, exactly. the same kind of influences or you bring something new I a little bit a uh, little bit everything I grew up you know kind of same I'm 31 so I'm a couple years older but you know chili peppers and a little bit of rap in there growing up you know, some hip-hop music and Led Zeppelin <laughs> you know I was I'm a drummer since I was in seventh grade so and so Rick <laughs> what, what are you bringing 
A uh, little bit of everything. Um, I help out with Brant and we change instruments with, between the bass a lot and the guitars. Um, um, I like to sit back and listen to what these guys put down and, and what they have and I hear those little little nuances that need that the song needs and, and could really use to hopefully fill it out mm -hmm. uh, with, whether it be a little percussion, a uh, little uh, acoustic guitar, uh, some backing vocals. I would say that without 91.3 doing what they a lot of us would be possible. They play us weekly, and we're like you know a local artist, and we made you know we've made friends with people there and stuff. So they like, do that a lot with a lot of local artists, which is really cool. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite radio stations around. Right. It's like sure. if they didn't do that, I don't think you know half as many people around here would know who we are. Having a having a cool spot to jam and work everything out has mm -hmm. been crucial. I mean, like I said, I've been fortunate to play with bands all over the country, Colorado, Arizona, St. Louis, you know, all over the place and uh, I've always wanted that spot that, you know, it's just this is our little it's our woo's den, you know. Den, it's, yeah, it's, it's welcome, home. welcome it is. to it, I mean, uh, it is. It's been a long time coming, but uh it's 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 a nice place to have a family. That's awesome. And we are a family, if nothing else. Certainly. Yeah. So, so who'd you play with recently? Uh, a couple of big acts, no doubt. Paramore. It's in Indiana, or should I say Indianapolis? We played Style Stage out there, and it's we played a, out there last month. We played Coldplay. Rise of Wireless uh, Music Center is what it's called. And, okay. Yeah. Where, where do you guys see yourself? I don't know. In, in five years, let's say. What, what's your goal? Uh, uh, honestly, after yeah. seeing what they were doing and seeing the real thing, mm -hmm. I want to be there. Yeah. I've seen it with my own eyes. He's not doing much different than what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> they may be doing a little bit different than what I'm doing, but if things were to happen where we were to do that, I would be ecstatic well, and we totally got, give it 100% of me. Well, we got into the, we got our foot in the door, and then they said, come back. And then now we're playing side stage. Well, well, I'd like to get on the main stage, and then, you know, we're trying to get this disc done, get on the main stage, and then, you know, wherever that takes us. I mean, it's like it keeps progressing into a bigger stage. I mean, For that's sure. something good. I mean, <laughs> it's going all, the right direction anyway. Right direction. Right? We, we're chasing down a dream now. I mean, we don't have really a choice. I mean, mm -hmm. I think everyone's pretty devoted and dedicated in this band. So, I mean, people wouldn't be showing up and driving here, for, you know, hey, it's two days later. Let, let's get a trailer. Let's go to Indiana. Yeah. You know, like, that's just a lot of dedication in this band. Yeah, exactly. And it, I mean, it's not like, it's like the more we'll gain a little piece of uh, success and then, like, It'll just you just believe more, so you'll put more into it. So it's like that's what's happening now. It's like everyone's on board, and we're like we're we're full steam ahead right now. Your new CD's coming out, right? Yeah, we. What's that called? It's called No Entertaining in the City. Basically, you walk up on a sign, you see it says No Entertaining in the City. So, I mean, it's like you you you, you find some beautiful you know music to share with people, and it's like you still get opposition from some people, and that's kind of like the you know the catch on it. It's definitely worked for you. I mean, what did seeing you were what top twelve bands to watch? Yeah, is that awesome. right? Awesome. That's great. It's great. You can't beat that. It's great. No. It's great. <laughs> it's, we're lucky. We're lucky. <laughs> well, that was a really fun trip down into the Wolves Den. Sure was. Hope you guys enjoy the music. Yeah. Our next segment is one I know you enjoyed. Yeah, it was beautiful. Our whole beat. crew did. Yeah. It's a fellow named Bill Denahan teaching folks that were homeless now in St. Joseph's home, putting their lives back together again, teaching them about how to paint with acrylics. And we're going to see what kind of a role painting can play in healing the spirit and putting life back together. That's right. It's a really touching piece to watch these guys kind of, kind of reconnecting uh, through painting, using art, and something that they had never thought they could even do. And you know what? Their artwork, it's great. Yeah, it's nice to see. Hope you enjoy this. Question for today on Arts Quest. Can the arts help you heal in spirit? Talking today with William Denahan. And we're here at St. Joseph's Home. Tell us about the work here and your role in it. Well, Joseph's Home is set up to create an environment for men to transitional housing where they heal from very serious medical problems. And we found that they have time to do other things. And we thought, why not talk about painting? And this place helps heal those and pick up the pieces and help return them to a respectable part of society. Now the specific work you do 
is working with acrylic painting with these artists.